your players do, why it is leave the town crier. To most people, speech is only something that is heard. Yet involved in speech production are a series of complex physiological events. The wind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul. The production of speech involves a number of mechanisms. The basic energy source is the breathing mechanism, which causes air to flow from the lungs. The larynx is the primary sound production system. Air pressures interact with muscular activity in the laryngeal structures to produce vibrations of the vocal folds. The sound thus produced is transmitted through the vocal tract, which consists of the pharynx, the oral cavity, and in some instances, the nasal cavities. The dimensions of this tract are changed by movements of various anatomic structures. Such changes modify the laryngeal tone and thus affect the nature of the sound which is finally produced. The vocal tract also can be obstructed or constricted to produce noise. This film deals with the process by which the vocal tract dimensions are modified and by which noise is produced the operation of the speech articulatory mechanism. Like most of the speech production system, the articulatory structures are difficult to observe since they are normally hidden from view. One technique which is used to study them is cinefluorography, which provides X-ray pictures of the structures in motion. Light strikes raindrops in the air. They act like a prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. These take the shape of a long, round arch, with its path high above and its two ends apparently beyond the horizon. There is, according to legend, a boiling pot of gold at one end. It should be noted that cinefluorographic film shows only two dimensions of three-dimensional structures. Since speech articulation involves complex and rapid movements of many structures, it is often helpful to slow down these movements by using higher camera speeds. This sequence was taken at the normal camera speed. Here is the same speaker producing the same syllable at the same rate. However, the pictures were taken at eight times normal camera speed. Slow motion photography obviously permits more detailed study of articulatory movements. The articulatory mechanism consists of a number of movable structures. The tongue is capable of performing a great variety of movements and adjustments at very rapid rates. The position of the tongue determines, to a great extent, the size of the mouth cavity. Its position also affects the size of the pharynx. As the tongue moves backward or forward, the diameter of the pharyngeal tube is correspondingly decreased or increased. The velum, or soft palate, forms the back portion of the roof of the mouth and extends into the pharynx. Its primary purpose during speech is to close the opening between the oral and nasal cavities during most speech sounds. As the clouds covered the stars, Bobby, Jim, and Jack laughed as they watched their pal Joe scale the tree at the city park. On some consonants, however, the velum must lower to couple the nasal and oral tract. Mm. 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 The operation of the velopharyngeal mechanism is considered in detail in another film of this series. The lower jaw or mandible can be moved to increase or decrease the size of the mouth opening. Mouth opening also is affected by the positions of the lips. They are capable of various types of movements, such as spreading or rounding. During speech, the lower lip moves more than the upper lip. 
The mild fall weather may have indicated otherwise, but a lone leaf high in a tree meant winter was on the way. The pharynx is a muscular tube extending from the base of the skull to the larynx. The back wall of the tube is seen here. The pharynx opens on the front side to both the oral and nasal cavities. This tube can be constricted by the muscles which form its walls. However, as noted previously, its size is determined largely by the position of the back portion of the tongue. A number of other structures which are involved in speech articulation cannot be moved. Except for the nasal cavities, they serve as places of contact for movable structures, such as the tongue. The hard palate is a bony plate which forms the roof of the mouth in the front portion of the face. The anterior part is a portion of the alveolar process which holds the upper teeth. The ridge on this portion is called the alveolar or gum ridge. The teeth also are important in speech articulation. The upper and lower incisors, which probably are the most important for production of consonant sounds, are visualized well on cinefluorographic film. The final portions of the vocal tract which should be identified are the nasal cavities. These two cavities represent a relatively fixed portion of the tract since they are formed almost completely of bony structures. It is obvious that many different structures are involved in the process of speech articulation. What is often overlooked is that the activities of these structures are not completely independent. Many of them are attached to other structures so that movement of one may affect the positions of others. For example, the tongue rests in the lower jaw and is attached to it by various muscles. The tongue can be moved independently of the mandible. But if the jaw is lowered, the tongue will tend to lower also unless compensatory adjustments are made in the tongue muscles. The position of the lower lip also is related to the position of the mandible, although again the lip can move somewhat independently of the jaw. The soft palate and tongue are attached to each other at the sides. Thus movement of one of the structures may have an effect on the position of the other. When the tongue is low in the mouth cavity, velar elevation tends to be less. If the tongue is higher, the soft palate also is higher. Another important structural relationship concerns movement of various portions of the tongue itself. Certain portions, such as the tip, are capable of moving as separate units. But since the structure of the tongue is continuous, movements of one portion affect the position of the remainder. E A A Such structural interrelationships illustrate the fact that the articulatory mechanism is a mechanical system, subject to various restraints which are as yet not fully defined. As a result, a simple structure-by-structure -structure description of speech articulation is difficult. But with this limitation in mind, let us examine the role of the articulatory mechanism in the production of vowel and consonant speech sounds. In the production of vowels, the only place at which the air stream is set into vibration is at the larynx. The sound is then transmitted through the pharyngeal and oral cavities and radiated from the mouth. On English vowels, the upper portion of the pharynx usually is closed by elevation of the soft palate so that sound is not transmitted through the nasal cavities. The distinction among vowels is not produced at the larynx. Vowels are differentiated by modification of the laryngeal tone as it is transmitted through the vocal tract. Ah, uh, e, eh, a, u. The structural positions which are most important in determining the vowel produced are those of the tongue, which determine the cross-sectional dimensions throughout almost the entire vocal tract, and those of the jaw and lips which affect the degree of mouth opening. 
E A O E O A O E A U Since the tongue and jaw movements are not independent, low tongue positions on vowels generally are accompanied by large mouth openings, while high vowels exhibit smaller openings. A, E, A, E, A, A, U, A, U. Although tongue, jaw, and lip positionings are the primary determinants of the vowel produced, it cannot be assumed that these parameters must always be exactly the same in order to produce a given vowel sound. For example, tongue and jaw position can be varied by a speaker without appreciably affecting the listener's perception of the sound. Ah, 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 ah. Lip posturing also can vary. Ooh, ooh, ooh. E, e, e. Ooh, ooh, ooh. E, e, e. Thus, articulatory positioning can vary on vowels. However, there obviously are limits which such variations cannot exceed without affecting the identity of the vowel. For the production of consonant sounds, the role of the articulatory mechanism is somewhat different than for vowels. Unlike vowel sounds, which are characterized by a relatively open tube, most consonants involve a constriction, or a complete obstruction of the vocal tract. These constrictions or obstructions are produced by movements of the articulatory structures and result in the production of noise. The manner in which the noise is produced varies. On fricative sounds, such as the S, the noise results from forcing air under pressure through a constriction in the tract. Stop plosives, such as the T, involve the buildup of pressure behind a complete tract obstruction followed by a release of the air, resulting in a popping sound. Affricate sounds, such as the ch, represent a combination of these two noises, a stop and a frictional release. For glide sounds and nasal consonants, resonance characteristics rather than noise production, are important. On the glide R, as in the word read, the changing dimensions of the track that result from the gliding action of the tongue produce the characteristics which differentiate this sound from others. Read, 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 read. On nasal sounds, such as the N, the oral tract is completely obstructed and the sound is transmitted entirely through the nasal tract, which is coupled to the system. Mm. Mm. Sounds which have the same manner of noise production can be distinguished by the place in the vocal tract at which the constriction or obstruction occurs. This is true because the place of articulation determines the configuration of the vocal tract, and thus the way in which it modifies the noise or the laryngeal tone. For example, the stop plosive sounds, T and K, are differentiated primarily by the fact that the tract obstruction on T is between the tongue and alveolar ridge, while for K, it is between the back of the tongue 
and the undersurface of the hard or soft palate. Ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka. Consonants which have the same manner and place of articulation can be differentiated on the basis of a third characteristic, voicing. Some consonants, such as the Z, involve a laryngeal sound in addition to the noise produced in the vocal tract and are labeled as voiced sounds. Other consonants, such as the S, are voiceless. No laryngeal sound is produced. Think for a moment about fishing. Now, if you will, think about several other leisure time activities. Up to this point, we have considered the role of the articulatory mechanism in the production of only isolated vowels and consonants. The speech process, however, is not as simple as it may appear from such descriptions. A much more complex situation exists when sounds are linked together to produce connected speech. In the first place, the articulatory characteristics of a particular sound are dependent on the sounds adjacent to it. This can best be demonstrated with vowels. As this speaker produces the vowel ah in isolation and then in various consonant contexts, Note how the tongue configuration on the vowel varies as phonetic environment changes. The articulatory characteristics of a vowel can vary even within the same consonant context. Such changes appear to occur primarily because of changing vowel durations. As syllables are produced at more rapid rates and the vowel becomes shorter, there is less time available for the tongue to move from the consonant position to the ideal position for the vowel. As a result, the structure undershoots the position that it would attain on an isolated, sustained vowel sound. Ka, ka. At a slow rate, the tongue is here on the vowel in this syllable. Ka, 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 ka. At a fast rate, the tongue is higher in the mouth toward the consonant position. Such effects of sound duration and consonant context occur because of the basic mechanical nature of the articulatory system. The position reached by a structure during a vowel sound depends on the distance it has to move from its position on the preceding consonant and on the time available for movement. Although speech often is thought of as a string of successive sounds, the articulation of two sounds may occur partially at the same time. This characteristic of connected speech is called co-articulation. Co-articulation can best be demonstrated on syllables involving bilabial consonants, such as the P. Since the exact position of the tongue is not critical for production of this sound, the tongue can begin to assume the position for the vowel that is to follow at the same time that the P is being produced. Note the differences in tongue positions on the consonants in these two syllables. Co-articulation can take place to some degree even when the tongue is involved in producing the consonant. For the sound T, the tongue tip must contact the alveolar ridge. However, the posterior portion of the tongue is relatively free to approximate its position for the following vowel. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta. 
ta ta tu 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 the dynamic characteristics of speech articulation also can be illustrated by the effects of adjacent nasal consonants on vowel sounds. During the vowel E, the velopharyngeal port would generally be closed. E, E. When saying the word mean, however, the port is open throughout the entire production. Mean. It appears that the velum does not have time to close for the vowel sound before it must again open for the final nasal consonant. This interaction between sounds results in the nasalization of vowels in nasal consonant contexts. Many complicated ideas about the rainbow have been formed. The difference in the rainbow depends considerably on the size you have seen only a few examples of how the articulatory mechanism operates in speech sound production and of how articulatory characteristics vary when sounds are put together in connected speech. A number of conclusions may be drawn concerning the nature of the articulatory mechanism. First, speech articulation is a dynamic process. There are really no places in connected speech which can be considered as steady state. The articulators are in almost constant motion. As a result, it cannot be assumed that speech is simply a series of individual stable units linked together. Second, movements of the articulatory structures are rapid. Third, since the activities of different structures are not independent, it is not valid to consider movements of individual structures separately. Fourth, the articulatory characteristics of sounds in connected speech vary due to interactions with adjacent sounds and to co-articulation of sounds. Such variations do not appear to be just meaningless artifacts of the system. The acoustic modifications caused by these variations have been shown to aid in the listener's perception of the sound. Speech articulation appears to be complex. Yet research is constantly underway in an attempt to discover simpler rules by which the articulatory characteristics of sounds in connected speech can be explained and predicted. Such research efforts are necessary if we are eventually to understand this dynamic process of speech articulation. In line of seaboard states to a nation reaching the mid-Pacific with the status of a world power.